Hello, everybody. This is Barry Johnson. Welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between developing your skills in recording versus developing your skills in mixing. Let's get to it. Okay, okay, okay. This is a very serious subject, and okay, and I think one that so very many people need and must think about, okay? Because it's a common mistake, and I think a lot of it has to do with the tools that we have today and these other aspects of things. I'm not quite sure, but my experience in in the decades of doing this and and I've and I've and I've helped a, I've been helped and I've helped a lot of people along the way solve their particular problems and in doing so usually that's a process of elimination where you start asking questions okay how did you do this well, how did you do that and you just listen right you just listen and then after multiple questions going back and forth you start to see a common thread a common denominator that may or may not be the root cause of that specific problem they're having that day, but is certainly drawing attention to a root problem that's giving them problems that they probably most likely don't even know they have. So back in the day, before we had all this digital stuff, everything really was about recording technique. Almost everything you learned, everything you applied was based upon technique because you did not have access, most of us didn't, to the types of tools that we have today. We had very limited access to compression and EQ. If we were mixing, we were probably doing so either on a four track or on a, an analog uh, console. And for most of us back then, that was probably most likely, you know, something like a Mackie 1604 or 2408 or something like that if you had a little bit more money, but certainly not premium analog consoles by any way. Great for live use, but, you know, they were trying to do the 24 right. They were trying to turn into a recording console, but, but it was still pretty basic, right? So you had access to equalization, right? You had EQ on those boards, very limited, but you had it. As far as compression, you pretty much had to buy a whole lot of rack units if you wanted to access compression, because if you wanted to put five compressors on, you'd have to own five hardware 19-inch rack compressors, right? So you typically didn't have a lot of access to a lot of those tools unless you had a lot of dinero, baby. And so what you had no choice is, is you were kind of restricted by the recording medium, okay, to some degree, um, you know, because you had, you had its limitations because unless you were in a professional studio, most likely you couldn't afford that may have been a four track, or maybe it might've been an eight track reel to reel or something like that, but something that it, it's nothing like what you were seeing in major studios. So, you know, it's not like you were doing, you know, um, um, radio ready stuff on this stuff. So you had to do a lot of focus on your recording technique today. If you just look around YouTube, you know, as far as techniques, like recording techniques, pretty much the only thing you see overwhelmingly, the number one thing you see are mixing techniques, how to mix. Okay. And that encompasses so many things as we all know, right? But how to mix is one of them. Okay. The other one is probably the number two popular one is how to master. Okay. How can I master my music at home? Okay. And I've got a video coming out, or it may already be out about that. If it's out already, go back and watch. If it's not out yet, stay tuned for it. Uh, I never know how these videos are going to come out when they come out because I tend to do them in advance because I got a full time job, like most of you. And so, so anyway, it's it's like how to master, right? And how to learn how to master my song. Okay, I've recorded it, I've mixed it, and now I've mastered it. Um, and so that, and these are all important topics that we all have to learn. We all have to want to learn every aspect of it, at least have certainly in the aspect of mastering, have a, have at least a, a foundational understanding of it. Um, you know, whether or not you choose to master your own is a different discussion. And that will be the topic of conversation for that video. Um, but, but so you've got the mixing process and then you've got the mastering process. Pretty much the only questions you see for the most part 
are, or the videos that you see, now there's exceptions to these. I'm talking about overall large percentage of the type of videos that are out there for this, like, excuse me, that we do call digital audio workstation. This is probably the next, and this is a very small one, right? Obviously, majority overwhelmingly is mixing. Then you've got some mastering, and then you've got down here, way down here, you've got how to record drums. Now that, you, you could write a novel on how to record drums. I mean, that is an art form in and of itself, okay? But you see that, which obviously a lot of people want to learn. Um, but not most, because most people out there doing digital audio workstations are not dealing with live drummers, okay? I'm not talking about most recorded music. Of course, that's done that way in popular music. I'm talking about most guys like you and me. Most likely, they're probably not working with real drummers. They're probably never recording real drums. They're probably using Superior Drummer, Stephen Slade drums, or whatever drum sample, blah, 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 blah. I use them, okay? Um, and so you're never quite learning that technique, okay? So there's downsides to all of this, right? You know, you'll see an occasional video on how to mic a guitar amp, you know, and how to do these other things. But... Um, but they're not predominantly, mainly because people are not seeking them out, which is really kind of what this is about. Because I think many of you are making a huge mistake. Okay. And here's why. Back before I talked about, I, you know, I've helped a lot of people and you, you find out about the root causes of the problems they're having. You know, the number one problem, if you have a muddy mix that without question, your number one problem is you did not record those tracks properly. If you have a muddy mix, listen to me and listen to me loud and clear. You either did not record the instruments correctly or whoever's instruments that you're mixing did not record them correctly, okay? There was little to no thought put into that aspect of fine tuning that. A properly well-recorded session should be incredibly easy to mix. People have this mindset that, let me just get it tracked. That doesn't matter so much. I'll fix it in the mix. I'll put a high-pass filter. I'll dump out a lot of that mid-range and that upper mids out there in certain instruments to, to carve out a space for everything else. I'm going to carve, carve, carve. I'm doing EQs like crazy. That's polishing a turd, okay? It's putting lipstick on a pig, right? That is not the way you want to do things. If you're having to do all that work with tracks that have been recorded, whether you record them or someone else did, if you're having to do that much work, or really hardly any work, what you should be doing to that afterward is creative, creative choices you're making, okay? Not just basic hi-fi audio stuff, okay? Was it pro Does it sound like a guitar? Does it sound like a drum? Does it sound like a bass? Does it sound like a violin? Does it sound like a sax? Blah, blah, blah. Does it sound like what it is I'm trying to do? You know what I mean? And so, Unfortunately, very little, if any, effort is placed or even thought about for the average person sitting at home. Now, there's reasons for this, right? A lot of you out there are working off virtual instruments where things are already coming in, already pre-done, okay? They're already pre-done. Let me ask you this question. Let's say you're working with a sample library or something. Do you think that the way, let, let's just say you've got um, a piano, Say you've got a piano part that you use it and you've got a sampled Steinway piano, right? Is it in your thought process that a recording of a Steinway is applicable in every mix? Is a tonality of that way that instrument was recorded, is that going to sit perfectly and fit perfectly in every mix? If you think it is, you're wrong. No, it's not. It's not. There are techniques applied, but you've got somebody you think about. I've got a video out about this. I don't see it in here. I'm kind of looking around and I'm surprised that it's not drawing attention to me. I'm sorry if this looks awkward to you right now. But anyway, I've got a book by Al Snap and I've got a video out there about that. You should go watch that. But Al knew what he was looking for. Al got his finished recording piece when he was miking and choosing the mic and the technique. That's how he got his sound. 
Okay, it wasn't going in and EQing a bunch of crap. It was let's get it right at the source, so we have to do very little work afterwards. That's something I want to encourage all of you guys to do. Even if you're in the virtual instrument world, I guess my point about the Steinway is that um, you know you, there's a debate to be made. You know, should I try and, and and alter that on the way in or on the on the way out? All I'm trying to tell you is have an idea of what you want that piano to sound like in the track, and you may find that just because that's a Steinway piano, that whole piano thing may not even be the right thing for you. You may want, you may want an upright in that position. I don't know why, but you may. <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever that may be. It may or may not be the right. You may want to do a, a, a Fender Rhodes or something like that or some electric piano. Maybe that wasn't the right tool for it, but because you knew it's a Steinway, I've got to use that. And the tonality of that may not be right. Now that's off the beaten trail of what we're talking about here to some degree, but focus a lot of your energy especially if you're doing music where you're recording audio and 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 I hope that's a lot of you like like analog sources not audio but analog sources I hope that's a lot of you out there um um only because I think real instruments real players are where music is at there's all things can be done and I certainly use all those tools and things that I do um, but that's stylistic. That's just my opinion. I'm not telling you wrong if you see that differently. That's what's great about music is we can all go different ways with it. Um, but but regardless of all of that, um, if, if you are recording analog sources, okay, really fine tune and learn that practice. Spend an entire day with the sole purpose of trying different mics out on one source. Spend the next day if you have if you have different mic preamps, try different mic preamps on the same source. Analyze that. Get to understand that. The next day, start tracking that same guitar part through EQ on the way in or adjusting that amp or adjusting things and seeing how that makes a difference. Try to analyze this so, so you can find, okay, what's the right microphone combination or placement to get the sound I'm looking for? Which preamp is going to work best for this, you know, and you learn these things and you start applying these things, your mixing is going to become so much easier. So more than likely, if you're having a hard time with a mix, it's because you didn't start out with the right tracks. Okay. So think about that, focus that, and make sure you're learning everything you need to know about tracking. We're putting the cart before the horse when we focus on mixing and we're still doing sloppy tracking, okay? You've just wasted your time and you're wasting your effort and you're not maximizing your potential, okay? Maximize your potential. So if you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like button, that subscribe button and come back up to that notification bell. You know, these things are important. Everybody says it on YouTube, but it helps me grow the channel, helps me get uh, out to more people so I can help more people. So I'd appreciate if you do that for me and you and everyone else, okay? Uh, if there are people I can help. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything, but I've got an opinion about a lot of things, and I don't share my opinion unless I'm confident in that opinion. Um, so, so do me a favor. Leave some comments down below. Let's talk about this. Share with me your thoughts on what I've just talked about now. If I've ruffled your feathers a little bit, then say so. Let me know. Um, you know, I, I, I can't do these videos without doing that to some people. There's just no way to do it because you cannot please everybody. Um, so, so until next time, okay, work on these things, keep practicing, developing your skills. You can be great at this. You will be great at this if you're obsessed about being great at this. Okay. Until next time, have a great day.